Hello, hi everyone. Um, I am so, so thrilled to, to welcome you all to a screening of 11, which uh, was commissioned for Strictly Seattle in 2012. It's a Zoe Juniper piece. And um, I'm here with uh, Zoe and Juniper and a, a bunch of collaborators who worked on the project. So um, my name is Erin. I'm the artistic director here at Velocity. And I'll have the collaborators and Zoe and Juniper introduce themselves. Um, let's start with you two and then for the collaborators, just popcorn it to the next person so they know to talk. <laughs> uh, great, thanks Erin. And hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and thank you Velocity for helping make this happen with us. So I'm Zoe Schofield. I'm the co-artistic director of Zoe Juniper and uh, choreographer, dancer, teacher, et cetera, et cetera. And um, yeah, do you want to start, Juniper? Uh, I'm Juniper. I am uh, live in, see my lovely behind me, my lovely house uh, that is uh, for pretend today. And uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited that uh, we get to like talk about what I feel is a pretty significant work in our lineage uh, with all the people who were there for that original creative process that was incredibly fast and incredibly interesting um, on so many levels. And so I'm excited to hear how people, what people are, how they felt and what they were doing while, they, while it was happening and then also kind of what it meant to them. All right, thanks. Oh, and it, Kristen's the next one on the mind. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Kristen uh, Frankowitz, and I'm over in Texas. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to see all you guys again. It's been a while. Um, so I have done stuff with Zoe and Jennifer, I think it was um, 2011, um, a crack in everything uh, over in Houston, that uh, installation, and then went to Seattle for this piece in their first um, of many years to do something with Strictly, Strictly Seattle. So I am happy to be here and to see this work again, to relive it. So next. <laughs> How about Eliza? Hello, my name's Eliza Del Pamonli. And yeah, I was one of the uh, original cast in the Strictly Seattle cast for 11. Uh, I still live here in Seattle and I'm continuing to dance and do movement design and choreography here. Uh, Britt. Hey, hi, I'm Britt, uh, Britt Karhoff and um, I have worked with Zoe Juniper in uh, a few different ways. I've been a performer. Um, I've also uh, I serve on their board. I have done some administrative and fundraising uh, work for them, and I just love this company. Um, I am uh, I'm a performer. I make performance work, and I also do visual art. Um, I will pass it on to Eloise. Hi, I'm Eloise DeLuca, and I'm so thrilled to be here. Um, Working with Zoe Juniper was some of my favorite, favorite highlights of my freelance career, and which is still going. I'm currently in Long Beach, California at my parents' place, but I've been in New York for the last 10 years. And yeah, I'm really excited to see the piece again after eight years and converse with all of you. And should we introduce Vlad, our magician behind the Velocity Dance Center sign, the <laughs> communications manager who is uh, streaming the video. So Vlad will be the person who, when we say, oh, can you pause that? And who's done some masterminding at uh, 
making sure this complicated situation can happen, him and Juniper. So thank you, Vlad, very much. Yeah, thanks. Um, so today again, um, we're gonna be watching 11, which was uh, commissioned and produced for Strictly Seattle in 2012. Uh, Zoe and Juniper and the company itself has had a really long history with Velocity, so it feels special to be able to remember this long history and trajectory um, that began with, with Strictly Seattle in this year. Uh, so the way this is gonna work is we're gonna have a little conversation at the beginning, then we'll move into watching and uh, pausing and having some commentary uh, about the work. Uh, and then we'll uh, take some questions from the chat. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask anyone here, uh, we'll have a look and, and respond to those after we go through the whole screening. Uh, yeah, and um, within the context of Strictly Seattle and Zoe Juniper, we're doing this uh, partially because Give Big is tomorrow, and uh, this is a chance for a, a whole bunch of organizations, including both Zoe Juniper Company and Velocity, to ask for donations in a in a, in a short time frame, a period of two days. And we really encourage you to think about the artists and arts organizations that have made your life um, so beautiful by their work and their um, dedication to building community in Seattle. I think Zoe and Juniper both have provided invaluable mentorship, creativity, um, and artistry to this community. So uh, if you can, please consider donating to Zoe Juniper and consider donating to Velocity. Okay, so thanks uh, you all for being here. It's really exciting. Uh, so I thought maybe we'd start off, maybe Zoe with you st starting to talk about Eleven and uh, what, uh, what we're gonna see. Awesome, thanks. Um, yeah, so, Eleven was a piece of many firsts for us. Um, and I also just want to say a thank you to Tanya Lockyer, who was the former artistic director who asked us um, the first time for Strictly Seattle and started this really lovely long relationship. Um, it was the first piece that we made for, I think more than five dancers. Um, it was the first time we made a piece on dancers who weren't in the company. And I think probably most, oh, it was also the first time we made a piece on music that wasn't commissioned um, specifically for the work itself or like that we weren't building in tandem. Um, and it was the first time we, uh, the, like the fastest we'd ever made a piece because Strictly Seattle is three weeks long five days a week for three hours. So it's both like a lot of rehearsal and a very short period of rehearsal. And I think honestly, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's definitely more I could say about it later uh, throughout the piece, but I really didn't know what I was doing at all. And um, I was so used to having a really long process and so used to, um, like having, I think also our rehearsals were always like four to six hours. So even just having three hours of rehearsal, it was a lot of really like new things. And um, I think I was also probably nervous because it was the first time I was doing something. So I thought I had to be like good at it and make a good piece. And um, it was also like all of our work is so, uh, visual as you know there's a, such a large visual component to it and um, that's just you know not a part of strictly Seattle or it wasn't at that time now it's um, been it's quite different in some ways now um, so Juniper and I talked a lot about like how could we sort of almost if we were going to distill the essence of like this entire huge set and visual world and video and and what could that kind of go, how could we distill that and where could we put that energy and drive and, and sort of like the functionality of that. So 
the lights, which we did with Amia Brown, who's a highly loved and um, amazing lighting designer based in Seattle, who I think has probably worked with everybody. Um, <laughs> So uh, it was our first time working with her. So it was a lot about the lighting and then the costumes and um, trying to create a visual design, the movement as the visual design and really um, having, trying to sort of internalize this overall picture and aesthetic that could, you know, maybe would have happened in video or set or, or something in that and having the dancers themselves and the layering of the dancers in space and the movements in space uh, be that element. And also, I just remember that I just had this like, I don't know, sometimes I get these desires for something and it's like, it just has to happen. And I really wanted them to have these like dip dyed blue legs. And I don't know if you all remember, but the like, problem solving that I think as a cast we all did together of like could we paint your legs could we like you know are there blue unitards are there and I think this was this was definitely before Velocity had a budget for costumes and everybody was really awesome and I think we all like asked our brother's sister's girlfriend who like you know worked at the dance discount store for nude leotards and nude tights and uh, you know it was uh and then I dyed them Juniper and I dyed them in these huge vats in our house so yeah that was that's kind of the piece in a nutshell awesome yeah does anyone uh want to talk about the the legs and the first experience of, of what Zoe was talking about? No? Uh, well, I remember <laughs> just uh, spending a lot of time with Zoe trying to figure out how we were gonna dip dye uh, the, the legs into um, some vats. Of, like I rigged up a thing at our house so we could like boil uh, blue dye. And then we had like hangers that I would hang above the stove and then the stove and it would just be this like place where you could like we were like dipping these and then we would just let it dip and then one of the ways that it more the, the little the way it ombres up the leg was partly because the you know, boiling water was sending up steam that was blue <laughs> so it kind of like got higher up the thing up the leg um of the uh, I just whatever you call them. Of the tights, yeah. Tights, yeah. tights. <laughs> it wasn't the most professionally made costume, was... nor maybe the most safe now that I'm thinking about it. We were like inhaling toxic fumes, but I do think, I, I do think that there are pictures um, on Facebook from back then. I, I think so later on, if you know you want, you can always, I think they're in one of the albums, but we have like, it's like the rigging you're talking about. There's a picture of it. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> yeah, we did it at also at my friend's house when I was house sitting and we jumped on the trampoline in her backyard in between the dying vats. So it was pretty fun. Also the just, idea of the blue, t the blue paint being like, you'll see when you're watching the, the piece that the beginning, the blue paint would have just gotten like the whole piece would have painted the stage blue with our legs. <laughs> So I think that this problem solving ended up paying off well. Well, that's what I was trying to remember is, did it, I feel like, I remember you talking about this, like, you're like, I have this idea and we're all like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then how is that like logistically going to work? And then when we got these tights, I think also like the slipperiness was an issue because we were on the floor for so long, but then we do get up. So I don't even remember, were we wearing socks on top of that? Yeah, you had socks on. I still have like 50 pairs of this like purpley blue socks. I think everybody had a little different because like we didn't have enough money to have a very uniform costume, but. Yeah, and I also remember a lot of hairspray being sprayed <laughs> on the soles of our 
of our feet because the floor of Broadway Performance Hall was a really slippery wood. Yeah. Um, and we had to run at the end of the piece. <laughs> and I remember being very afraid. Yeah, that, yeah. that's funny. I think now that, yeah, there was something to, well, today, Kiplin, y'all remember Kiplin? She wrote to me today, was like, oh, I remember those octopus legs. And you kept talking about being like alien octopus. And I totally forgot about it. And then seeing her text, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. On the floor forever with those. And that I feel like the blue kind of helped create that gestalt kind of went along with with all of that. Uh, did the collaborators, did y'all expect to be doing this? Did you expect to be wearing blue and, and doing octopus legs on the floor? <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say like any work that you're doing with Zoe, <laughs> it's gonna have something that you don't expect. So you can't really go in like, oh, I know what this is. You're just, you're kind of going full in. And as it comes up, you're like, yeah, that's a normal movement that I would do. Sure. Um, and I, I mean, as y'all are talking about this, I'm remembering more of the physical movements. Um, so I'm excited to see the video too, to be honest. I don't remember all of it, but um, I do remember getting really bad like uh, burns on the inside of my knees from this walk that we were trying. It was like the the toe to knee, like your totally crouched down walk that we did all over the floor for like, I want to say two days of almost three hours. Like that was a big part of it. <laughs> so there's definitely things that you can't predict. You just go in like, okay, what do you want me to do? Okay. So. I think that there's definitely, I mean, what you were saying, Juniper, about like the visual components of Zoe Juniper, like that's already like, like when we signed up we were able to look at your past works and like get a sense of what your aesthetic was and what your like what your pieces have been in the past and so like normal I mean a lot of a lot of dances that I had been prior in prior to that were much more like your body is kind of the thing like your body the dancing that you're doing in your body that's that's the dance but I think that one thing that's very true about your work is that the dance is essential, but also just a component of all of these other elements, sound, movement, lighting, and then in this case, costume synthesizing to make the make the piece. So personally, I was like, do not put me in a leotard. I don't want to do it. I like don't do ballet anymore so that I don't have to do this. <laughs> and and then like looking at the video and being like, oh yeah, it was like the entirety of all of us there just did create this this creature, this image, this like, slushing slugging creature coming forward so yeah I actually I I'm glad you brought that up Eliza because yeah I remember that and I'm I remember that there was like a lot of feelings around the leotard and the tights and uh I'm curious I remember we talked about it and I feel like we talked about it a fair amount, but I also like, now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I hope that eight, year, eight years ago, Zoe, I was like conscious enough and kind enough to have had a good conversation with you all about this. Um, but we all did it and I, or we, you all, you all did it. And I, and I remember too, like, we talked a lot so much about like this sort of feminine embodiment and empowerment and like yeah so I'm curious like what made you change your mind or what happened because looking at these images and watching the video everybody looks amazing and it I hate leotards too so also I'm kind of like it feels like it was purely functional because it was like bodies like wanting to see these each person's body and wanting to see this thing of these like legs and this creature and so I'm just curious what that was like for you all and also a preemptive apology if I wasn't 
sensitive and kind about that. Zoe, I remember, I remember just kind of having to trust you on it. And I, I think I, I'm with Eliza. I remember like by myself in the nude leotard with no support. I mean, it just, it felt like this, like, like pale flesh smashed down and I felt really naked in like a super vulnerable way and I remember feeling like this is so and like something about maybe this piece wasn't one where you like made me slick my bangs back but there was something where I felt so not myself I felt I I didn't recognize myself and I was really uncomfortable and I but then I remember seeing us all together for the first time and it made sense. And then I, then I, I started to feel like I had some trust that, oh, this is going to work together. I may not feel like I am, you know, that I'm my usual self and I can like really own this all by myself. But as a group, I feel like I can, I can do this dance. I think that's actually pretty much what it was. I think at first people were a little shocked. They were like, you want us to wear what? Like, we're not in like, you know, school or like a dance studio. And we're like, you want us to wear a leotard and tights? But I think once you got past that, we realized it's more of like the image of all of the people. And it became like more connected to all these legs. And that was more the illusion, not an individual person wearing a Leo and all that. And I I think I kind of trusted that the lighting and everything would make it more about the image of the body and not so much like you could tell from the audience they're wearing a leotard and tights want want you know so it felt more like strength in numbers type of thing there were all of us out there kind of amoeba together and like the um the octopus image that you talked about so it felt which fine. Might, might be a great segue into uh starting it um just sort of see how it goes because uh, I think that what you're talking about is exactly uh, we I mean we can see it in the opening sequence yeah I think so um so a note on the the filming uh, Broadway Performance Hall has an interesting layout that required a, a super side angle so know that um, you might not be able to see everything on one side of the stage um, I think we're all learning that archival uh, hindsight is 2020 in this era of digital um, watching, but I think we, we can all still enjoy the film. <laughs> uh, okay, hit it, Vlad, we're ready. <laughs> I'm always reminded when it first starts that uh, we wanted to uh, have the, we didn't actually want to play the Bolero during this, the show. Uh, we wanted it to be only in people's minds. So we wanted to play Bolero during the intermission. So that out in the intermission, everyone would be hearing Bolero over and over and over again. And so then when they came in, it would just be silent and you guys would dance in silence. I feel nervous <laughs> for everything that's coming. I'm already late. <laughs> Just for anyone watching who, for everyone watching, this counting was incredibly complex on the inside. Uh, and it took all my willpower to keep my mind at the task of counting because uh, we'll start we'll start doing very different counting in a minute and oh it was a mess with you that I lost. I was so stressed out. <laughs> so stressed out. <laughs> but you guys look great. I mean I'll also say it's coming up, but 
there's a part where one day in rehearsal when it's supposed everyone's supposed to have frozen and Eloise kept going and she didn't freeze and I was like yes that's it let's keep that so it worked right we had to be like really specific with the timing and counting so like that part of our mind was was relentless like you couldn't stop thinking but we also had to be so much about the imaginative state that like um those two things were just there wasn't room for both to be fully operating or it was a constant ebb and flow between the two um but still yeah i learned a lot doing that also say that you guys look amazing in those leotards and tights. And see, perfect. Eliza looks amazing in that leotard and tights. the delayed version but anyways um uh for a lot of this movement um everyone's talking about how like intricate the timing was um but I do remember a lot of it even if you thought you were on time you sometimes you weren't you had to really do the feeling and the quality so it was like you had to just keep doing it again and keep trying to figure out what qualitative thing worked for you and then what kind of worked for like the vision that you guys had you, like all layers of from rehearsal to like getting on stage. So you hear different comments and go, okay, well that worked in rehearsal, but now it's not reading. It doesn't feel the same here. So I remember a lot of, like it's, it's, it was physically exhausting because you had to keep pushing yourself every time you did this. So like we're doing this straddle for forever, but it's that much harder because we had to like push it every time even more. So I remember really having a lot of, um, like journeys every time I did this work. And so it's so fun. I didn't remember that we popped up like that. That's cool. I also remember that, um, you know, we've reset this piece a bunch and nobody's ever, because of your gymnastic training, nobody, that solo has stayed just your solo. Nobody has gone into the hands, like headstand into the, backflip around into a split yeah Vlad let's rewind that let's see that again <laughs> <laughs> yeah play, yeah let's see it perfect that's great also the mouth section that's coming up too was really after Christmas stuff about that.
something that wasn't like the thing you're supposed to do is to look a certain way. It was like we all looked in unison, but there was definitely a unison quality to this, but like it wasn't gonna work unless we also all had a personal connection to the fingers in our mouth and to what that felt like and the sensual sensation of that. Um, yeah, I still think of like that. <laughs> Was it, wasn't the imagery, maybe this was just mine, but I, I feel like I remember it being like chocolate was, uh, we like our fingers could like send like chocolate out of each fingertip, like into our mouth and dribbling down our faces. And so for me, it was just like a constant stream of chocolate. <laughs> was that part of it? <laughs> I don't remember that specifically. I remember like, like this pinky goo. Oh wait, Vlad, will you pause it again really quick so we can... Thanks. Okay, inky gooey. Yeah, like an inky goo that was just like, like, and your fingertips just like were sensations, like tactile sensations. That's, that's my memory. What about you two? I remember it being a lot more <laughs> like, I mean, I'll never forget this one time that I first took Zoe's class and she was like, she was talking about this chicken and she was like, this chicken is like falling off the bone and you're just like, you could put it in your mouth and literally just pull out the bone like in a cartoon. Like, and I remember being like, okay, that's very vivid, but also like, it was just so animalistic and raw. And I just remember, I remember this part being like, I don't know. I think you said something crazy, like your fing yeah, fingers going through your mouth and like, or like eating corn on the cob. And I don't know, but this piece now watching it, it's been so long that like these floods of just um, visceral, like moment experiences and environments that I think is so um, apparent in all of Zoe Juniper's work is just you're transcended into this environment and this space and it's so clear and honest. Wow. It's one thing that I really like without talking about how it was like all in unison yet everyone had to be their own unique person. I think I feel like that just always that rings true for me and I don't know if I if that's something that we said in this in this except for that I just know that in in making unison work that everyone being their own individual within that is what makes it like a compelling uh, for me like a compare a compelling uh, unison is that everyone's not the same that life is a little bit more complicated than that and that the goal was to be be the same as everybody else but be strong in your own individual which i think comes back to what you guys are talking about with the costumes and that by yourselves the costumes were like could feel very uncomfortable and also be like why are we doing this but then you get into it as a group and so it's like as a group the costumes and the way that it forms and the way that your bodies are come emerging out of the space in this like very strange splits move um with all this upper body uh, stuff like it all starts to like click together in a way that I don't know that was that you know I don't know if it's like oh we're gonna talk it we we don't talk about it like that the whole way through but like it's clear in the intention I guess in the end that you guys could find that and that we could find that with you I think yeah I think so I was going to add, um, I think it, a lot of it is like the nuance that's in the work. And I think each of us kind of finding that little detail in it. That's why you honestly could watch, honestly, live performances, as we all know, is so much richer to us um, to watch. But if you watch this over and over again, you could really see like little details and kind of go with someone on what they're doing. Um, and it is that individuality that kind of pops out the more you watch it because at first you're like oh they're all doing the same thing more or less and the more you watch it you can see those little nuanced things I, I think you're talking about this is um yeah I completely agree with all of that this is Eloise's big solo moment a lot happens when people like but it was perfect you know 
I mean, I think that happens a lot is like we have ideas about what something is supposed to be and then things happen in rehearsal and, and it's like, oh no, that's actually what should have happened or that's what needs to happen. Yeah. So hit it, Vlad. I think that was the hardest part counting to come back to is that frozen part when it was she's going and you're supposed to start exactly where you stopped and you have to keep remembering what set you're on but look nobody's messing up so i think we also had to just practice the idea that messing up wasn't a thing like to practice being okay with yourself as you move forward and not feel like oh shit I fucked up I'm sorry I swear about you but like you know no. <laughs> yeah totally right yeah 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 totally oh, I remember this part I feel like I was I remember telling you to be like sexy mermaids or like really indulgent cats or mermaids or something like that I remember that like grand plie switch around move although painful at first was like one of the most like comfortable movements and I was like can we just keep doing that <laughs> like that one felt good I remember it's deeply satisfying like look at Eloise oh face Meanwhile, I'm like, wait, where are we? Where are we? Where, what, what am I on? What am I on? <laughs> That's a good thing about having like that moment where you're the only one moving, that if you did it again and it's a mistake, they'd be like. Also, I'd just like to point out, I've been upstage left to this whole time off screen. I know, we're sorry, Brett. You can talk to the videographer about that. But you're about to have your big Eloise in moment, Eloise Brit chicken off moment. Can we just say, look at the craftsmanship of those tights? Look at that blue. Look at this. You can't even see the socks, it blends in. Thank you, Kristen. I remember drilling these for a long time. Yeah, there was something about the the one, two, three. <laughs> well, it's like all it is, isn't it? It's just like one, well, but two, I mean, like three. the walk, the way the walk was like the the, the, oh, the, the float, the floating leg, as opposed to the the walking leg. I just remember there was lots of. I think there was like a lot of discrepancy that. about the what you were hearing in the in uh, the timing and what the downbeat for these walks were. Yeah, I think that's when I started to learn that I don't hear music the same way that everybody else does. I think that's when I started to pick that one up. See, this is also one of my favorite moments. What Brit, Brit and Eloise are doing back there. Um, this is also when I think I started doing it. Like, I'm just gonna dance and then you all tell me what I'm counting, like what the counts are. Like, I'm just gonna move, right, with all of this. And then you tell me if this is like in one or one and, you know, I think that's when I learned that part. I also remember you all spending a lot of time like on the sides of the room or if I would be working with like one person and that you all would be like, okay, here's what the counts actually are, or here's like how we're gonna get, how we're gonna actually do this together. Like, I think I just remember there was a lot of like, this is what I want, can you figure out how to do it together kind of thing. That's something that's also apparent in all of your work, or at least all the projects that I've worked on you with, or you know what I mean, um, is this, idea of work and idea of process over product which I mean 
all of your products turn out incredible and there's so many different elements to it, but I have to say the process working with both of you is, it's unlike any other situation where you fall in love with work ethic again and you fall in love with exhausting yourself to the point of reaching a different place. So. Thanks, Eloise. <laughs> Yeah, I think that this was also specifically actually in this movement. I don't know if you guys remember this, where I feel like it was, I think one day I was just like, oh, I totally lost it. Oh, I, I have to say something about that because that was a, <laughs> a moment that Allison and I both had like solo moments and I'll never forget you being like, Eloise. Why are you dancing in the back? Why are you apologizing for your movement? And I was like, <gasps> and it like hit the nail on the head because it was, it still is something I think about to this day as a freelance dancer being like apologizing for your movement and what that means on a deeper level. And yeah, and it was the best, it was so much fun to do that solo part because it's like just explosion. Like you are the person who did, why can't you? Okay, let's maybe we pause it real quick <laughs> i just Thanks. was rem yeah. remembering that moment and how much we worked on getting that timing for your guys's run in and like being able to hit it with like and then each time we went somewhere new it was about how many steps you were going to take to get out there and so you had to like but then also since the music's on this completely repetitive thing again it comes down to this like counting and it's just like how do you even know when to leave and i mean i can honestly say even though i was like helping you guys get to a place where you to, could make that happen. I have still have no idea how you guys decide this, when to go. Like I, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't hear the counts. I just, am, and now. It was this one was, oh, go ahead. Kristen, go. I, I was going to say the periphery, like all visual periphery became like really important in this piece because we had to just look for the same person cue that we saw running somewhere to make it on time. Cause we had, as someone mentioned earlier, this, like the slickness of the socks. Um, so running out there was a little different for a while. You couldn't make your count <laughs> um, if you were sliding. So we had to look at each other a lot. And then also on top of that, um, like, some of the poses, especially that the marching that we were doing in profile. Um, some Sometimes our focus was in such a, a way that you actually didn't have per peripheral information. Like the entire first half, Allison's the only person I can see. So like so much of so much of it for, especially like if you don't have anyone to look at is really just about locking into the counts and knowing when things are gonna happen and like agreeing that we're all gonna be there in the same time, um, but not being, like that could lead to a very like sucked in quality of like being like I've arrived and I'm alone, but it had to be that we arrived together, like with a with an outward quality of being exactly where you're supposed to be, which I think is also a thing we worked on a lot for for more physical stuff of like putting ourselves into these exterior external molds and like the the sense of arrival, the sense of like just finding your place in in the in your body um, was another thing we did a lot of work on for this. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's funny that you all are talking about how nerve wracking this is or all the work. You really don't see it in your faces. Like, it's actually, um, it's amazing what you all accomplished within three weeks. It's a little less than three weeks, actually, too. And uh, like in the very beginning, Eliza, since you are basically in the front, see you a lot in this video and just the confidence that you have and like how much you're just owning it is really great. That's awesome. Like, yeah, we, I, think we, really I mean, works. I think we, we worked a lot on that too. Like that, that I remember that even the beginning part, just like horizon <laughs> focus that like, like thinking of like the the foggy yet yet like driving focus and quality of eye contact and quality of of being um and I think I do remember at one point Zoe like you pulling me aside and having like something like a pep talk of I forget exactly what the words are but like my body remembers the sentiment of like 
I don't believe what you're doing right now because you're trying to do it for someone that isn't yourself. Do it for yourself. And then also like you have a lot in you and go get it. It was like, it was like, I see you. Also, I see you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was really great to like, I think I learned a lot about like existing in like the, the, how much you can expand into and outside of yourself in performance and through imagination and embodiment in this. Oh, nice. Thanks. While I remember actually all of these conversations, BT dubs, I think I also had a very long conversation with Kim about being a tiger or something in that little moment there in the beginning. Um, but while we're paused on this part, I think I this was like my my idea of like the four little swans from Swan Lake, which clearly if anybody is a ballet person, that would be like unrecognizable and potentially blasphemous or something. But I just remember that I was like really wanted to play with four little swans. And uh, yeah, this part, I remember this part being very, very challenging, but um, hit it Vlad. I think Kristen, this is the knee drag part is coming up. <laughs> This is something that I think I was resetting this, like Kim and I were resetting this somewhere like two years ago or something. And I was like, yeah, I choreographed this as a younger body. Like this is a one and done demonstration and uh, this isn't happening anymore. <laughs> It just looks great. Like, all, I mean, all you focus on are like a bunch of like legs and uh, it's a really good visual. It really is. Right. Nobody's really paying attention to the nude leotards or tights. Yeah, it's just like a lot of legs. And I just remember a lot of the movement um, that it's just certain dancers, I think, feel very comfortable in the type of movement you try to evoke. And I think it's just very like satisfying to do. And if it doesn't feel that way at first, um, I think dancers are, they got frustrated, but after a while, you try to find a different route for them to feel comfortable, so. I remember that, yeah, there was a lot of that. I think too, like, that's the interesting thing. Yeah, this, there it is. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Those blisters. I think I had like like a uh, burnt like burn marks on the inside of my knees for like ever. Like Marley yeah. burns. And I yeah, like Marley I burns. I being like, I mean, you shouldn't be scraping your knees anyway. They shouldn't really touch the floor. <laughs> I was like, what? Thanks, Eloise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I think this was a piece where I learned a couple of things. I learned a lot in this piece maybe as much as anyone doing it but like oh not everybody is as flexible as I am I didn't know that beforehand which is dumb I know that's dumb but and it was worth it <laughs> <laughs> and I remember this part which also when I've tried to do this because you guys you know I've performed this piece like I had to like reset it and performed it and then there's parts like those promenades going to the inside leg. I don't know what you call that. On the whatever. Going to the, on the or. Is that on the or? On the dong, on the dong. Um, I was like, oh my God, why? These are so hard. I love this part. Eloise, you're really going for it there. You're really not dancing in the corner in this. You're not hiding. And also, Britt, do you see that you I let you have bangs in this piece? So it wasn't this piece, I guess. <laughs> I 
I love the the use of like silhouette that starts happening and then sort of builds through the end of the piece. It's not as obvious from this video angle, but uh, yeah, I just think it's brilliant. It sort of makes us again less like individual humans and more like a machine. I remember. Yeah, I was... Oh, I was just saying, I was saying that, but it was muted <laughs> a little bit, the, that this part was literally all about the silhouettes, which is really interesting as, like, the continuation of, like, all of these, like, limb, limb-based things that were happening, and then we put it into this, like, the silhouette, like, the thing that's happening in the back was just, like, a simple running, but in front of it was all of this, this, like, uh, I don't know if it's, like, a, it was, like, a wall, but it was, like, a, a, a human sort of like. Hey Vlad, will you pause it for a second? Perfect. Okay, keep going. Juniper. Uh, just that idea of like, um, like a human. It was like protection for the people. So as a group, we're protected, and we're like, we use each other as like an ability to to. Uh, as a group, we can like work together and and create a, a protective barrier, but the. You know, so like in a sense, the silhouette becomes like so. There's this like kind of chaotic thing happening in the back, this sort of like s stressful running, and then in front, there's this kind of amazing we weaving of like a shawl, in a sense, like a, a sort, of sort of protective coating for the people in the back, and then that sort of like keeps getting revealed. Yeah, that was I really like that part as well. Yeah, the end has this, like, this moment starts to have this uncouthness, like, it's just, like, ruptures out and, like, breaks, like, I remember the, uh, the unraveling Bolero, the Radiolab mm. um, piece, like, just, like, how, how meticulous and repetitive and, like, just over and over this, this piece is for, for, what, 16 minutes long? It's, like, it's just doing the same thing over and over again, and, like, so much of the beginning starts that way and then like it's it's still just so structured and so tight and then i think the part that we were just doing in groups when we we all just like explode that part didn't have specific counts it was like it was more of a flocking situation and so to like even just to go into these like go as fast as you can together and like take up as much space and and, and like run and slide as much as you can to like go into that release um was was really um like so much of the piece is building up to that, even inside of dancing it. It's like, okay, we're here, but also where are we going? We're going to that like rupture. Mm. I think um, I just wanted to add, because a lot of the piece started with all these like linear um, patterns where we're in this creeping forward, like encroaching. And then this one, like you mentioned, it did kind of just take off like an eruption. Like it was very circular. Um, and it's kind of, it's hard to tell, but I remember us running and flocking in these circles trying to make it more and more um, energy building, like almost like this little hurricane starting. Um, and so I, I remember that kind of like that eruption coming out of all these lines and very bound. And, and this part was like release control in these huge circles. So I remember it being very like, it's like a, like a beautiful volatile, if that makes sense, like inside, like it's brewing and stirring. So I remember what you're talking about. I, do you guys remember, um that we were trying to get that slide right. And so Juniper started demonstrating the slide. At, uh, and I just remember that Juniper and Britt, you were also really, really good at the slide. And then it was like, wait, has any, have you guys played baseball? Or like, then there was this whole sort of like baseball slide conversation. And then... I think that might have been the most liberating part of this whole piece for me. Um, <laughs> I think I was one of those inflexible dancers that was out of my league with this, uh, with this like movement quality and aesthetic. And I, I was not the good ballet student. And, um, and that was like finally the moment where I could just run and throw my body on the ground. <laughs> I was gonna add, well, let's roll, let's roll the footage of Jennifer sliding. 
I went uh, I wish I rem I very vividly remember it and I also remember Brit demonstrating the role it's like because I'm I wanted it but I couldn't I think I was like you know like a dog whose legs kind of don't they like got out in the wrong direction or something like that but yeah well, it's interesting because it's like a lot of times I remember thinking about this a lot about how when we're told to slide, we like kind of jump up to hit the ground. And I remember trying to emphasize that you want to go down to go up so that you weren't like jumping onto your knees. You weren't like dropping down onto something, but you were like trying to flow kind of in an upwards formation, even though you're going down. And I don't know if you guys watch uh, the, the Seahawks at all, but uh Russell Wilson likes to he has to slide as a as a as a quarterback and man when he slides it, it's like the all of the worst things because he like literally jumps up and then slams down on his knee and I'm like how is he not getting injured I'm like please Russell don't jump up to slide just go into the ground in a nice delicate way where you're putting your hips down and you're sort of sliding along your leg not not your knee forget your knee you don't need your knee down there it's like your knee is the last thing, even though that's the thing that's leading you. So oh, you should be. Go ahead. Oh, this is reminding me of just like the fact that we rehearsed this in the summer in Seattle, and I'm a sweaty person, and that black Marley with the black gaff tape on it in Kawasaki, just oh. like that that sound of like doing the walk, the leg walk in the beginning of it, just being like, <laughs> and just being like, I'm stuck. I can't travel forward. And <laughs> I am trying, but I am, my body will be here now because I am melted into this tar-like floor. <laughs> I don't remember that. That. Was, that was a sweaty summer, to say the least. Yeah, you kind of had to wear pants for the sliding part. Also, I think that was pre-Velocity getting air conditioning. So, thanks, Velocity. I think I remember it reading like 100 degrees once on the temperature dial in that room where we were all sitting in the splits for hours. <laughs> Support the arts, give us air conditioning. Woohoo! <laughs> right. Woof. I'm starting to sound like a monster. Um, let's keep watching it. <laughs> yeah, maybe skip back like 20 seconds so you can sort of see the building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, y'all. I have to say that yeah. you all look so relieved in this <laughs> right now. <laughs> There's a sort of like, oh, thank God, quality about your faces. I just remember, will you, Vlad, will you go back to like right before the very end that that I think that was supposed to be that everybody slid in and then turned their heads. But Kristen did maybe what I think is one of the most genius things I think I've ever seen a performer do, and that you knew they were early. And so you, you like hung out in the wings, right? And so then you slid in late. I mean, uh, it all worked. Yeah. 
It, it did. Um, because I remember like that part of the music, like it keeps building and if you like if you listen to it a bunch, you you realize when the ending is coming. But if you're like also in performance mode, as a lot of us do, sometimes we go a little faster. And so you have to remember to slow down when you're doing like, you know, live stuff for like maybe your first time or whatever. And that was like our first show. And I was like, well, I don't know. I just decided it last second. I was like, well, we're a little early. <laughs> artistic license maybe this will look cool I think Zoe and Jennifer they'll be into it and uh it was fun and like the last little note it was like I don't know I just I mean I gave it a shot and that's the beauty of live performance is you can kind of play with it um and when you work with people that that you trust and that obviously I'd worked with y'all before and I knew that you trusted like what I was doing and I felt like it added another layer this massive group sliding in and I was like well I'm offset anyway why not slide a little bit later and play with it um it was fun you know and you liked it so that was good (laughs) no it totally worked I mean because they were all a group they had to all go together like you know it's kind of definitely that thing like it was awesome seeing Brit like even walking out in that part and the end and you were just so like confident and you were on and then I think people behind you got a little gun shy and like jumped the gun and so it kind of became this thing and it's like well it's the group you have to respond to the group you know you have to like move with everybody and then you were back a little bit so you were able to go later and make a decision I mean I I remember yeah I thought it was great I loved it how did you feel um, I was just gonna add to like kind of what you're saying um when you were talking about how like you know how amazing that part looked at Brittany was like all that stuff um I remember when you first picked the dancers um like to do your work because I think there were different choreographers doing a different work at, at the festival. So when you picked the different dancers, I remember being like, this is so cool. She picked a lot of different types of people. And I was like, I wonder what we're going to do. Um, Cause <laughs> there were so many people and like the last work, well, the one I had just done, it was like, it was like, like five or yeah. Or yeah, it was, it was small and everyone was picked for very like unique styles and meshed together for like their different, um, talents that they all brought and I was like this is a huge group and I was like I can't wait to see how these all these bodies are going to be used in this way to kind of bring something to life and as we got rehearsing I started seeing all these different movement qualities that I was like well, this is really cool so I, I remember being really um, impressed with everybody in the work for all different things I'm like looking at all these pictures of people <laughs> in the work um, but it was, it was really cool to see that because um, I'd only worked with you guys in a really intimate setting where there were just like the four or five of us and we were doing um, an installation every weekend that was this amazing world. Um, it, truly it was one of like, and I, I've told you this uh, and many people that know like of the shows that I dance, I, I love a lot of different stuff, but it really, you really do both of you pick um, people and find a way to bring out their character um in a work and and that's what I love and that one was like totally life-changing for the a crack and everything which was right before this um, piece so I was totally in that world like oh my god how are we going to pull the life out of all these people and what are they going to bring it was so anyways kudos to that thanks Kristen yeah everybody was really I mean that's one of the fun things about Strictly Seattle is that you get to work with who's there and, and like really doing that. Um, and everyone was awesome. So what did it feel like watching it? Or thoughts or? Yeah, I think it's cool to watch the, do I have an echo right now? I'll just keep talking. <laughs> Great. Um, I think that it, it was interesting watching it again or watching it. I think I only saw it one time um, from the outside. Every other time I saw it was inside of the piece. Um, and, and just feeling um, a part of the whole, like seeing seeing the whole composite, you know, um, 
it, it, it's just really, um, yeah, it's really cool to know how much as an individual, I'm like, ah, I have to do this. This is happening. I'm like, like all of the like energy and thought that is going into like being like together with everyone, but then seeing like, like, honestly, like it's refreshing to see the piece and not feel like I have to look at myself and not feel that like, I am like, um, something yeah, like, like I, I just watched the whole thing and it was cool to see or, uh, this organism functioning and being like sorted and, and, and then being organic and spilling and yeah. Yeah, I think that's what's so special too about that experience. And though it was quick, um, being at Velocity for this whole, for Strictly Seattle, it was, it f- also forced you to kind of become this collective or like you know we were like our own kind of army and we had this these tasks we were fulfilling um and I mean it's I'm sure everyone can relate that like it's not often that you get enough time in a process of creation to connect with other people and I still remember all of these um, dancers so well and I cherish that time and I don't know it was just it was just this incredible like um, experience that I think challenged us and created this crazy thing which I think at the time to- looking back on it watching it I'm like oh my god I look like a fetus I look so young <laughs> like and like I remember my fear during it but not being experienced enough and um you know comfortable enough to kind of let your ego go that it's not just about you it's about this entire um kind of force that we created um so i want to jump in and say to the folks who are watching that um we are excited to respond to any questions that you might have. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit uh, to a question Betsy Brock had um, Hi, Betsy. about. <laughs> she says hi. She everyone's clapping. You should go back and read the comments. We can't see the comments on our screen. Folks who are listening. Um, see my screen is a little frozen but sh- the gist of it was did you all talk about the um vaginas eating the floor yet <laughs> ladies <laughs> do go on uh i don't feel like i have to be the first one to talk about that or any thoughts or do y'all have Oh, whatever. All right. Um, yeah, the vagina is eating the floor. <laughs> I mean, y'all did talk about the octopus legs. I, I imagine that's what that's about. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I'll be, I, I'm I'm not leaving you hanging. I just I never had that image, so I can't really say anything about that. Like that didn't like cross my mind. Oddly enough, I mean, but. That's Maybe exactly there's something... what I was going to say, actually. Okay. <laughs> it's more that I think I feel a little embarrassed that um, I feel a little embarrassed that maybe I was so uh, interested in and this sort of like these women and, and this movement and this sort of overall look that I didn't read the, I didn't intend or read into it perhaps the potentially obvious uh, sort of, yeah, vaginas, like, like, you know, sort of alienating forward into space and, and, you know, I guess it's a little naive or I don't know. It just maybe is like, I guess also I just saw it as this like sensuality. And I remember we talked a lot about pleasure, like a lot about pleasure, which is obviously quite um, ironic considering that maybe the physical positions were not so pleasurable. But we talked a lot about pleasure and about like 
power. And so if that's bring conjures up vaginas, well, I can understand. Yeah. So be it. I do. <laughs> I do remember it. Um, yeah. Like what you're talking about the movement in the beginning and it felt very like possessive and more like a spider, like, or something going after prey in a very slow, confident, like sensual way. It didn't feel like, um, I don't know, like outside your body or like, what shape am I doing? It was more, I think it was very like lead and like driving forward and this, like this whole thing, you know, like anyways, that was my take. Um, we don't have any more uh, questions. Wait, Eloise, were you going to say something? Did you unmute yourself? And I, I feel like Britt was going to say something too. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I think we talked a lot also about um, like woman being a female, identifying female body. And like, um, there was a lot of <clears throat> imagery that you gave us, but I think those walks kind of, I remember them um, coming from this place of like, like, could you actually walk like that? Could you actually move forward? And like, could you make your sit bones do this do what your legs do. And like, it, I, I feel like I just remember the physicality of that so much. And then adding on this layer of like, okay, now this is your constant. And now can we, you know, juxtapose that with all of these difficult timing issues? Yeah, I think I, in fact, felt very androgynous, like very, like, very, like, just creaturey for all of that. Like that base layer of movement feels very much just like creature- um, and then right above that is the, a layer of like curiosity, sensuality, and like, but that's not, that's also not like gendered for me personally. That was like a pursuit of curiosity and pleasure and tactile stimulation, like just of the senses. And then above that was like the separate element that was sometimes added of the like, the more like uh, blasphemic tropes of ballet or like the like, the like femi poses of the mermaids. Like that felt like an additional layer that was like a posturing that we would go into and then sink back out of but I felt like yeah my my I don't feel like I had particularly felt like that was a feminine exploration for me um yeah very well said for sure yeah that's why I guess I feel like I'm like oh no I just it was like creature and sensuality and what Eliza said, what everyone else said. Well, and up to that point too, I think in the works that we've been making, there have been these efforts to take away the idea that uh, the human, like, how do I, it's not take, it's like that the, the what you might think you are, uh, somehow could be like given a new a new way by just sort of doing making some abstractions and like there was a piece one of the first pieces we did we uh I, somehow we had painted so we had or a second piece i guess or painted a line down people's face that just went right down the middle like this and it was just a tiny little red line and it, what it did was it abstracted the face so that then it became less about the individual like when you look at somebody and you go, you see their emotion and you see their thing, it just like slightly abstracted it so that then it became more about the full body as opposed to it like looking at somebody for and then seeing their reaction. And a lot of, and then I see sort of a through line in these things where it's like, oh, this, the, it's definitely, it was never about a specific uh, gender per se, but about empowering one to feel confident in themselves i guess for in whatever that whatever that is and that it doesn't have to be um yeah i don't know i'm sort of not quite coherent on what i'm trying to say i think but it there's this seems like the abstraction of the individual for a group um then allows the individual to come back in. I guess we kind of referred to some of that.
All right. Well, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, we don't have any more questions. Uh, is there anything you'll want to talk about before we say goodnight? I so when do we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Can we do this some way? No like, joke. Distantly? I like want to try this again. I think, I think I won't apologize this time. You, oh, you won't. I thought you said I want to apologize. You won't. Yeah. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Uh, don't apologize. Yeah, let's do it again. Sure. Sure. Um, I just. I'm, I'm sure you have the technical ability, guys. That we can all record from distantly, and you know, you layer it together. Right, because on Zoom we can hide <laughs> the lower half of my body because my legs won't do that anymore. <laughs> my legs won't walk like that anymore. But I, <laughs> but I can serve the, the top half. You exactly. Oh my God! What if we just made like an animation, or we got like hot dogs and I like dipped them in like blue paint, and that was like the bottom, and we just had this like. Dun, da, 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 da. I feel like, or just clay or something, but I feel like, Eliza, I love that idea. I feel like we're all creative enough that we could make this. Totally serious. I really think we could. Yeah, Britt, maybe we you could, could have do the, something. The Zoom people on the bottom could be the bottom half, and the, the Zoom people on the top could be the top half, or that could be the animation on the bottom half yeah. of hot dogs with dipped in blue. I think you've got the beginning of something, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think this needs more research, a creative residency. <laughs> In Zoom world? Oh yeah. my God. Oh, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, I just want to say that I really love that eight years later, like all of these people are still in my life and that there's still these not still, they're these amazing artists and and doing work and like that I've worked with all in different capacities since then. And to me, that's like really amazing and incredible. And um, to our viewing audience out there, I hope you check out all of these artists uh, individually as well um, and see their work and support their work because they're all really amazing. And um, Eliza is gonna be one of the choreographers for Strictly Seattle this year. My eight year grow up, glow up, grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moving on up. Yeah, I didn't think, I'm, when I came to the Strictly Seattle program, I had just moved to Seattle like a couple, half a year prior. And I thought I was gonna leave shortly after the summer. And then in part because of that programming and like people that I met and like, um, just, yeah, then the, I, I'm still here. I haven't left. <laughs> I love it here. Seattle is great. Totally. Yeah, I love Strictly um, because it's, it feels like a, a huge connector point. A lot of people come to Seattle starting in Strictly, either for Strictly or because they want to move to Seattle and they want to make connections. And it, it really does that. It's it's not just a, a marketing line. It's It's truly a connecting space. It also is such a diverse um, course of study too. Like we got to take Cunningham. We talk, took so many different varieties of classes and were exposed to a lot because Seattle is so um, amazing for their art scene. But uh, yeah, it was just a, eight years later. Like I haven't seen this piece or these people and I'm so grateful. It was a really special experience. No. I wish we could all go get ice cream now. I mean, I guess we could like individually go get ice cream, but oh well. Um, and, also, and I remember, it, oh, I was gonna say, it was my first time in Seattle um, for mm -hmm. this. I remember coming for that. And so it was a great introduction to the whole scene and a lot of friendly people in the whole studio and everything there that made it feel very homey. And you can walk everywhere to everything. and. It was awesome because I'm in Houston and, you know, like we drive um, a lot of places, but now everybody's out bikes and running and, you know, but um, it was a really like great time there. And it kind of, it 
went pretty fast. So it was amazing that we put that whole piece together in that short amount of time. And, but yeah, watching it, I'm like, yeah, we could do some of that a little better. You know, everybody does that. They're like, oh, that would be fun to try again. What does it feel like now? You know? Um, yeah. Cause all the dancing that I do now and for different things, um, it calls upon different, like different styles and it's not the same as that work. So it's kind of like, a, um, brings back memories of the like mental uh, journey through all the stuff we were doing. And I'm like, Oh yeah. And then in Seattle, and that was like a different time of our lives. Right. It's almost, it's almost like a decade when you, you know, eight years, but it's, it's a different time for a lot of us in our lives and watching it, you kind of like, it's like a throwback. And then you're like, wow, it'd be kind of cool to do it again. And these people are all still tuned into the arts world. And we're like, uh, all of us are still dancing, um, creating art, whatever it is we're doing in these layers to bring that back would be be really cool. Now that all of the cells in our body have regenerated in the seven year cycle, we could do this anew. (laughs) But that was the one thing that was really interesting was like watching that movement again, I can feel like it, that piece, even though we just rehearsed it for three weeks, the amount of drilling that we had to do to get that so in our bodies, like watching that choreo, I, I'm, I'm do like, it. I can remember it. I'm like, mm-hmm. doom, doom, grab the bunny, put the chocolate, like, <laughs> like <laughs> drop, the, drop the string, drop the string. <laughs> like, uh, I, yeah, it was very surprising to be like, I don't feel that with all of the movements that I've done when I see videos again. But for this, I'm like, oh, body knows, body remembers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. We should do it again. I feel like one of the things that's just I just wanted to say, like, also I I was I sent out that email to you guys earlier about that I still have the. It's been on my refrigerator ever since then. But the little cards that you guys wrote to Zoe and I, and you each gave us one, and I I don't I just remember when you when it was when the show I don't know if i don't remember if i was able to be at oh yeah i was up there never mind um i just remember just like you guys were like in two and a half weeks and then like you know two days of tech and each of these are like what three and a half hour days i was just like this is freaking amazing that they that this is happening like how in the world did because i remember the first week and a half we spent all the time on those that's the splits and then it was like, oh, there's still a whole other 10 minutes to go. And it was like, and then we like, all the rest of it just started coming together. And then like, it just came together in the last like few days. And then you guys just empowered it on stage in a way where I was just like, you guys took it and made it your own. And I also remember like that, like Zoe and like the conversations prior to you guys performing is being like, okay, hey, this piece is now you, you guys are the piece. It's not what was you were told to do it's not the choreography it's now you guys doing it for yourselves and then you guys did and i and i just remember just being so appreciative of that and i'm glad that uh you guys did that journey with us because i know the process can always can, has its ups and downs and it can be very frustrating and and hurt like and then date some days and make once some feel like oh i'm not i'm not good enough i'm not i'm not this i'm not that and like that the in the end it, the, all of those things could be released is like a very difficult thing I think to do but you guys I think all really did that and the releasing of your own sort of insecurities about your, yourself on stage maybe like and letting that become something that didn't matter was like so phenomenal to watch over two and a half weeks because you could kind of watch people go through um, different kinds of ways of being during the process and I just remember just being like, this is, I can't believe this is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing that everyone came together so well together. It was awesome. Well, your slide really was everything that, you know, was the catalyst to us doing such an incredible job. So thank you, Juniper. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> the sliding, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I know. I really adore you all. I feel like um, in the interest of people's time, since it's almost nine, maybe we should uh, 
wrap this up. Um, and uh, you can, um, we're gonna make the, the piece available, or it's always actually, it's always available. It's on, it's uh, on Vimeo, it's on our website, but Velocity is gonna also make it available on their page. Yeah, we'll post it in the comments here. And then um, also this video that you're watching right now will be available for 24 hours too. So you can go back and relive us reliving. <laughs> It's like a and then you can tape it loop. yeah and then you can remember taping watching the <laughs> reliving um i feel like we should um off off the line of people watching i feel like we should uh make a reunion date make it happen that's beautiful stuff. thanks vlad uh, yeah, thanks Vlad for helping us. Also in the comments in the pin section is a link to donate for Give Big, like I mentioned. Uh, donate to Zoe Juniper, donate to Velocity, donate to any artist that uh, brings you all the joy and all the love. Um, they really need it right now. It's a tough time for artists. And so, uh, yeah, it's not what you, you give, it's it's showing up and supporting in whatever way you can. We appreciate everything. So thank you for watching. Um, we can't wait to see you in person, but until then, tune in when we have all these events. Uh, Zoe and Juniper are also putting together a, a whole series of these sharing events. So um, uh, we'll reshare them as Velocity, but you should just really uh, follow them and they'll they'll share it on their, their um, social media too. Okay. All right. Shall we say should I say goodbye? Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, Vlad. Bye.